Fun Pajama Party. My unrestrained guest, Carmen Electra. My underwire broad girlfriend, Lisa Cushell. My unwashed garage van, Dan and the Dan Band. I'm Katie Puckrick, and you're all invited. Thank you. Thank you, Vincenza. Yes, you are all invited. You know, by now, my neighbors are used to seeing me running around in my frilly dilly, so they've stopped calling the cops on me, which is a good thing, because the bachelorette pad is percolating. Oh, yes, it is. It is percolating. And I do all my own stunts, but where is my lady? Where is my lady? Lisa Cushell! <laughs> Katie, I'm, I'm over here with my friends who are backing away in fear all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know what's happened. Uh, I'm here with Diane, Sarah, and Lisa, who have been fixing us drinks for hours, so they're a little tepid. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> And so, now, you're very important role models, I hear. You're part of the Girl Scouts? That's correct. All right, but they wanted everyone to know. They wanted me to make this very important distinction. Lisa here is with the Boy Scouts of America, okay? What? She's with, she's, she's a Scoutmaster. Lay off. Okay. Okay? okay? okay. But Diane and Lisa, they're with the Girl Scouts of the USA. That's right. So, it's a very important distinction. Okay. Both the same country, different names. But Ladies. they're warping young minds, that's the point. <laughs> exactly. And, and Diane here has lived everywhere. Where are you from? Uh, Texas, Alaska, around, Asia. Wow. wow. Okay. Thanks for the drinks, ladies. Sure. I'm going to go over to my best friend Katie now. Yeah, come over here, Lisa, and bring some beverages. To the, the Lisa <laughs> brings beverage music. <laughs> exactly. Isn't it delightful? It is delightful. What it, Here, this is a margarita, and I have a pina colada. How, what, how did you pronounce that? It was slightly... No, don't try it again. Okay. It'll be dangerous. Lisa, I have a special friend here at the party tonight. She's a really good girlfriend of mine. She's come all the way over from London, England, <gasps> and she's right here, Bebe Lynch. Wow! Yes. Hi, Bebe. Don't hi, Bebe me. Suddenly, she's your best friend. Well, she is my... Look. <laughs> There's nothing sudden about it, BB. You know, I moved. I moved. <laughs> oh, this is, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Lisa. All I'm saying, all I'm saying, BB, is, you know, when in Rome, get a new friend. Okay. <laughs> so, but this is your and first. I'm stuck with a leaning tower of pizza at home. Excellent. Is that what's <laughs> in London? Name. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. But this is your first time in America. Yeah. And the first time, what, amongst far too many Americans for your liking? It's okay. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong thing. <laughs> Wrong thing to say. I'm loving it. I'm obsessed. You know what has bothered me, though? I thought everyone would love my accent. I'm ignored. <laughs> Although, one person thought I was French. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Americans for uh, you. We're very worldly in our you own have, way. Um, your chocolate's good. Almond M&Ms. Ooh. Oh. Have they been here forever? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. For a while. Yeah, Not for forever. Them. Not forever. Okay. Several I've years. Corrected. They're delicious. So, will you, you're welcome to hang out and, like, try not to alienate the other women here okay. with your, with your uppity, I've, sarcastic British ways. Yeah, yeah. We know about your sense of humor. Yeah. So, I'm so ironic. Oh, far I'm too so ironic. I'm so ironic. I, I can't even understand you anymore. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, you're, yeah. you're not the only one, Bibi, who's been doing a little bit of traveling because Lisa and I have been on our independent vacations. Yes. So, um, I'm sorry this is a little boring for everybody, but we do have to show our holiday snaps. We do. Now. <laughs> we have to share. So, where did you go? You did say snaps, right? I did. Okay. Snapshot. Um, <laughs> I went to... Uh, the island of Maui in Hawaii. Oh. And uh, I took Ooh. so many pictures, but I just bought a choice, too. This is the, the Jeep that I rented when I was there, uh -huh. which was very fun to uh, put the top down and all that. And that's the hat I bought when I was there. Oh. And how about the, the man you brought? The, he is not in this picture. No, he's taking the picture. He is taking the picture on the other side of the Jeep. Excellent. And this is the <laughs> view from our hotel room. Which is probably the only view you saw of Maui <laughs> the whole time you were there. After you took the Jeep from uh, the airport to the hotel. Exactly. No comment. But yeah, um, so it was quite lovely and I w was very sad to leave. And I went to Mexico. I went to Mexico south of the border down to the Pacific coast. It's very, very beautiful. And this photograph shows me groveling 
on the black sand beaches. Uh, I couldn't actually believe that, that it's volcanic sand. I just couldn't believe it existed. So I had to you know, get down on my hands and knees and, and check it out for myself. So that's a slightly compromising position. <laughs> um, and before I show this next photograph, I just need to explain that I went with my boyfriend and he was adorable and he was saying, oh, you're so pretty. I, I just have to get a picture of you. And it, we're in Puerto Vallarta. I said, I just, just got to get a picture of you right now. You look great. Just, just stand back two feet. Yep, that's it. Hold it. And then he took this picture of me <laughs> under the bimbo sign. <laughs> Did you have no idea that that's so, what he was doing? So, so I, yeah, exactly. So I'm standing there, I'm completely posing, you know, <laughs> Vogue, Vogue. And uh, there you go. That's very funny. So um, I love that men know that all they have to do to get us to do anything is tell us we're pretty. <laughs> yeah, like, really, honey? Yeah. <laughs> like this? <laughs> I love that you and I were both in sunny, sunny places and we came back just as white as ever. Woo! <laughs> Ghostly. <laughs> so sad. The phantom women. <laughs> I know. That's SPF 30 for you. Exactly. I'm not going to be a saddle face when I'm a groovy granny. Nor will I. No. But Katie. What? I brought you back some stuff. Hand it over. <laughs> Well, I, I know how you love to chow down. Uh, I sure do. So I brought you a little Hawaiian pineapple. Oh. We ate um, fresh pineapple every morning, and it was it was very yummy. Ooh. So maybe we'll cut that up. OK, I hope so. And good. then, and you can also cut it up and use it as a hat. Oh, that's thoughtful. <laughs> and then I also brought you some chocolate-covered macadamia nuts, because I realized when we got to the airport that I hadn't bought you anything, <laughs> and these were there. <laughs> oh, well, at least you're candid. This is um, <laughs> refreshing, if not... Uh, but you're excited, right? I'm, I'm excited, because the eating's involved. Now, I got you something really good from Mexico. Um, not this bag, because I'm oh. keeping this. All mm -hmm. right. Okay. <laughs> but um, I did, after I, I noticed that I was being posed forcibly under the bimbo sign, I got you some bimbo brand Mexican donuts. Ooh. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. So They've been a little squished in your suitcase, They're a little it squished. It wasn't in my suitcase either. Uh, and I got you some boo boo loo boo. <laughs> what is that? Oh, boo boo loo boo. I'm sure you'll find something to do with that. It's a candy bar. And it has a Casper on the front? It's, you know, he's been wearing the sunscreen in Mexico. All righty. And uh, this is kind of when you're a little premenstrual. It's cranky. <laughs> It's something I, I think that you'll find great use. Wow. And uh, this is something special, maybe for a, a quite intimate night with you and your gentleman friend. Yes. Hot nuts. <laughs> so. so if you says, hey, Lisa, you want some hot nuts? I'll go, I would, but I'm a little cranky. <laughs> <laughs> that is it, Lisa. You stick around. Come back with some more Carmen Electra. back at Octogen's Pajama Party, and we are moments away from being in the presence of the delicious Carmen Electra. You know, she's an actress and an all-around bon vivant, but the aspect of her that I'm most interested in is the bon vivant <laughs> side. Oh, yeah. Woo! Get a spoon. Let's dish! <laughs> Carmen Electra! Fresh pineapple for you. Love so, pineapple. Do you? I love pineapple. Fresh from Hawaii. Is it sweet? Island pineapple? of the sun. It is very sweet. Yeah. It was yellow and squishy, which the lady told us that's when you cut that's into good. it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So everyone's been all frothed up all night long. Carmen's coming <laughs> over. Carmen's coming over. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Because there's such intrigue surrounding you. You've got to ask her about Dennis. You got to ask her. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna give the girl a break. I'm not just gonna march her in and ask her about Dennis. Um, but, uh, what about Dennis? <laughs> what about Dennis? 
<laughs> Dennis Rodman. I mean, are you, you were married? You're not married? You're not married? We're not married anymore, but we're very good friends. And um, we, we love each other very much. We, we definitely have some kind of strange connection. Um, but, you know, I just don't think that right now is the time we need to be together. You know, we're both going, you know, have different things going on. So I'm just trying to focus on my career and, mm. and my own life. And how did you two even come together? Because it just seems like a real flamboyant clash of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. I think that's what was so you know, exciting in the beginning because, you know, he, he's so, it's such a dangerous kind of guy and, and it was exciting and fun and we had s just a blast. We had so much fun together, but we, we actually met um, in a nightclub. Imagine that. Hey, <laughs> be crazy gal. <laughs> so. And so, I mean, does there, was there any trouble with the fact that you're both obviously a little fiery from what I've read? I mean, <laughs> that's kind of dancing with danger there. You know, we and just. And fisticuffs. <laughs> or handcuffs, no. Um, you know, we, we, we just love to have fun. And I lost my mother to cancer um, about a year ago. And mm. it was, um, mm. that's when I became really close with Dennis because he, no matter like what, I mean, we definitely had our problems. I think everybody knows that. Um, but he was there for me during a hard time in my life. So I don't know, I kind of feel like his mom or something. Like he's my little boy and you know, I'm like, hey, what are you doing now? What kind of trouble is, uh, is Dennis Rodman getting into now? But you know, we he's love each other. We, we know how to have fun. That's one thing I can say about us as a couple. Hmm. We have fun. Well, he's definitely a little boy that likes to dress up in his mom's clothes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got some nice ones, I can imagine. I can't see her clothes fitting him, though. No, so they probably don't be fit. very awkward. Uh, so you want to keep him away from the wardrobe. You don't want any big tears no, in those lovely no little frillies. <laughs> so um, I, I would imagine that it would be quite difficult to live your life, you know, whoever you're with, in, in the glare of the tabloids. I mean, that must be hard. You know, at first it was because, you know, whatever job you have, you're, like, you're proud of your job and you, you try really hard, you put in all your effort and then when things are made up about you, it's hard, you know, you don't know how to react, it kind of hurts your feelings, but then you sort of get tough, you get used to it and as long as you know who you are, does not matter what anyone else mm -hmm. thinks. So we can't believe everything that we've read? Not everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. 50-50, you know, some things are true, some things aren't, you know. Right. Do you ever, if there's a story that comes out that is completely false, have you ever had a family member call you and be mad at you for not having them know first? Oh, or? my mom used to get so upset. You know, she'd want to call, you know, this person that said it and, and, and get them on the phone. And, and of course, because that's, you know, I'm her baby. So, right. of course, mom and dad are always looking out. But after a while, you realize that it happens to every celebrity. You kind of just take it and you say, you know what, I wanted to be in this business. There's a price to pay. There's a good side and a bad side. And you learn to accept it and you move on. Well, right. Carmen, I know that you think you're pretty fancy for being in the tabloids, but I've had some tabloid coverage as well. Really? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know it's not something to be proud of, but I'll show you anyway. When I was working in England, uh, there was a newspaper called The Daily Sport, although it was known as The Daily Spurt by those who read it <laughs> and knew that they probably made up everything. And I actually made the cover one day. Um, That's amazing. Mom and Dad, it's a complete lie, but here it is. I'm tops for sex. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> It says here, TV Girl's Amazing Confession. And, I mean, this was completely astonishing to me. Of course, I never read this newspaper, and people were coming up to me going, uh, so uh, pretty good in the old bedtime brigade, huh? And I didn't know what people were talking about. <laughs> you know you've made it when you're in the tabloids. Well, yeah. If I'm, people care enough to buy these magazines, then, hey, you know what? It's, it's all good. It's all publicity. It's all publicity. So I want to know, Carmen, about your pajama party pedigree. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you've come from a long line of, of pajama parties as a kid, I understand. Yes. I used to have them all the time. Purple Rain was the movie. <laughs> what, you'd watch? Totally. You'd watch oh, Purple yeah. Rain? <laughs> you'd watch Purple Rain. And, oh, my God. And my neighbor's Apollonia, by the way. What, your neighbor now is yeah, Apollonia? Yeah, I move into this townhouse, and I'm in Unit A. And I get a little knock on the door, I open the door, and it's Apollonia bringing me coffee, welcome, welcoming me into the neighborhood, and I just couldn't believe it. It's wow. like the, the Prince Reunion Club it or is. something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I used to like look up, like, Apollonia, she's so beautiful, she's with Prince. You know. So when she was bringing you coffee with somebody snapping pictures, and the next day it was like, Apollonia and Carmen in huge affair. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. She's a lesbian now. Right, exactly. <laughs>
So you must have some good parties, though, at, at your condo. If it's the it's the Prince Brigade prancing around. Well, yeah, I, I like to have parties. I mean, mm. but the neighbors the neighbors hate me. They don't like me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, one side is like the cool side, yeah. me and Apollonia and these two young chicks that are really hot. And then the other <laughs> side, like they just hate us. So I've had to, you know, tone it down a little bit and maybe have parties on Friday and Saturday nights. But they still send the police. Like they call the police and. But the police are so cool. Okay, just send an autograph. <laughs> Wait, the, police, autograph. the police ask you for your autograph? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, so. what you need to do, Carmen, is to invite those, those snooty neighbors, and then they'll just have to pipe down. Exactly. We did that with Phyllis Diller. That's right, we did do that. And it worked. Phyllis Diller lives next door, and oh, she was complaining, <laughs> and then we invited her. And, and now, now she's it's sweet. all good. <laughs> yeah. She makes us brownies, she makes popcorn, she's great. <laughs> So in, uh, you do have, obviously, an amazing wardrobe. Look at these Perspex shoes you're wearing. Phenomenal. Like Strip our shoes for the pajama party. <laughs> what are you trying to say about us? <laughs> you know, this is very appropriate because later on we got a home movie on this amazing strippers museum that's out in the desert. Can't so, wait to see that. Yeah, so you got to see that. But you have, um, I heard the, a very funny story involving a fur coat oh, that yeah. you wore on a shoot. <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing. That's uh, yeah. what I want you to talk about. It. Why else am I asking you? It's just the girls, right? I can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, it's just the girls. Um, I was in Alaska with Baywatch, shooting an episode of Baywatch in Alaska. How bizarre. Isn't that bizarre, right? Yeah, yeah. So they wanted to do a photo shoot for the sports magazine, and they took me over the top of glaciers on top of this huge mountain filled with snow to shoot pictures for the magazine. So I was in the red Baywatch bathing suit and they brought out this fur coat and they said, oh my God, this fur coat is like $20,000. You have to be really careful. Try not to even get snow on it. So it's like a really long coat to the floor. So we're shooting pictures and everything's going great. All of a sudden I realized I had to use the bathroom. And obviously there's no bathrooms on top of glaciers. So I had to make the whole crew and everyone turn around and I run behind the helicopter and I hold the coat in front of me and I squat down to pee. <laughs> and um, when I stood up, I realized that I missed the snow and peed on the coat. <laughs> so I was like so nervous because of, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, have to buy this damn coat for $20,000. So I put the coat on and I was trying to play it off and pretend like, you know, it wasn't on there. And I ma managed to get through the shoot. But then later on, I thought, oh my God, someone's probably wearing that coat. Oh my gosh. Can, can I just warn and all you ladies? It's very to valuable. <laughs> Can I just warn everyone to keep your clothes sort of close to you when Carmen's around? <laughs> and we'll be back after this with more Carmen Electra. Actually, if you don't mind, oh, you are back at Oxygen Pajama Party with the deliciously delightful Carmen Electra. Hey, Having hey. fun so far? I love it. I want to move in. Okay. <laughs> Do you have an extra room for me? I think we'll build one. Okay. We'll, we'll build a little tree house for you out there. Who needs men when you have lots of girls? And food. <laughs> mm -mm. One of my favorite things that we do, Carmen, every week at the party is either Lisa or I go and explore some bizarre American pop cultural phenomenon. We bring it back in the form of a home movie. Now, this week, I was very lucky to drive out right into the middle of California desert in Hellendale, where there exists Exotic World. That's right. It's a stripper's museum, and it's run Woo! by the 74-year-old Dixie Evans, and here's a little brochure from the Strippers Museum. It's open to the public, anybody can go. And uh, what they offer you there is the history of uh, burlesque and G-strings and anybody who's ever wanted to take their clothes off. And um, I thought it was something that was edifying to share with you, the viewers. So let us watch my home movie.
Dixie? Hi, yes, Katie. I've been waiting to see you. Well, I've been waiting to oh, see you. Honey, how wonderful of you to come to Exotic yeah. Mwah. Mwah. So this is it, huh? Yes. Well, you're a guest, a very welcome guest. Oh, thank you very but much, you Dixie. See, the word burlesque. Usually we think of striptease dancers, that's what I always thought of. Mm -hmm. But you see, Aristophanes up there, five centuries before Christ, is known as the father of burlesque. So Jenny and Lee was the originator the of, this, yes. of this museum? That's exactly, not, yes, not here. Mm -hmm. These were goat sheds when I came here. <laughs> <A few laughs> were it a goat ago. shed? Yeah, the, the, oh yeah, there's only <laughs> one old goat left, that's me. This used to be me. Oh my goodness, you look just like Marilyn Monroe there. Well, thank you ever so. We had the Jane Russell of burlesque. We had the Lauren Bacall of burlesque. We had the Sophia Loren of burlesque. The girls told a big story. You just didn't come out and take your clothes off. Right. Do you feel that it's different nowadays, young women who go into a stripping career? It's gone mainstream. In fact, that's the substance of my museum, is that uh, the striptease dancer is not a second-class citizen. So you're standing up for women's oh, rights. Oh, absolutely. Because, you see, uh, the girl out there is somebody's daughter. She's my sister. If you were a young hopeful during the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s, where are you going to break in? So, you see, uh, burlesque was a wonderful training ground because this museum celebrates an era before television. Who's this uh, this person? Is, this girl is Sherry Champagne. That's her ashes right there. And all of these costumes. Wait, excuse me. You, yeah. just, you have someone's ashes yeah. on display? Oh. It was in her will. Everything goes to this museum. Now I got a real, real treat for you right now, okay? All right. Tony, you're going to hit it. That, her name is Tony Alessandrini. She cut her hair off, bleached it blonde. Now she's my protege. Because <laughs> she's a mini Marilyn. Yes, I know. Would you believe she's 50 years old? When I was talking to Dixie earlier, she said that you're her protege. Yes. What does that mean? That means she's my tormentor. So <laughs> I'm Marilyn now. Uh, I do not recommend anyone to be an exotic dancer or go into a striptease business. No, no, no. You have to have a calling. What about you and your work? When you're dancing for a crowd, do you feel like you can kind of manipulate them? Yes. <laughs> I do. I love it. Um, manipulate them, make love to them, enjoy them, have them, that, them feed me back the same thing in whether it's one person in the audience or 2,500. All of these girls that you see on these walls, oh, they started out when they're 15, 16 years old and they worked right straight to the end because it's business. When, how old were you when you started in 69? I was 19. 19 years old, mm -hmm. so. Right those out of were... high school. Why did you put this bow on? Okay. Oh, look at this. Uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> look at you, look at you getting me going. Yeah, right. you? And what about the future? Is there a future for burlesque and for exotic dancing? Or is it just gonna get, you know, more slippery no. and pole-like? No, 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 it's, it's definitely going back to the old-fashioned ways, because all the girls that are riding the poles are getting really bored with just the pole. They want costumes and feathers. And it was an industry. It was a business. I will not let them kick burlesque under the carpet, forget about it. It didn't exist. No. It's better than real life. It's fantasy. It's kind of what this whole museum is about, isn't it? Oh, thank oh. you so much for showing me around, Dixie. Well, I it loved was it. Honor to have you here. Bye. Bye. According to Dixie Evans, burlesque is as American as apple pie and baseball, and she's just preserving a tradition. Well, it's so funny how uh, saying it's burlesque makes it so much less sleazy than saying it's stripping. I'm like, I, I guess I would do that. I, I could just see myself when I'm that age with lashes and the same thing going That'll on in the hair. hair. Always Still trying to work on. it. 80 years old. It'll, it'll be the, the Carmen Electra Museum. 
Sure, yeah. why not? Why not? But not on a goat farm. No, I don't no. see that for you. I don't feel that at all. <laughs> we'll come back from more hijinks and goats, possibly, if Carmen's lucky, after this. <laughs> at Oxygen's Pajama Party. Hey, you know, you can write to me. You can email me at oxygen.com, Oxygen Online. It's the Pajama Party website. And I'm here for you. I'll respond. And I think I will have to respond after this next section. When we come to this part of the party, when I get weak as a kitten, it's time for Midnight Munchies. <laughs> In charge of Midnight Munchies is more popularly known as the swivel-hipped song stylist of the Dan Band, but tonight he is merely Chef Dan. Hello. Today I'm going to show you several tasty recipes you can prepare with bugs. Oh. Uh, don't say "ug" to the bug or squirm at the worm. Actually, eating bugs is a perfectly normal thing in some countries. But today I'll be cooking from a special recipe book called Eat a Bug by David George Gordon. So this is real. You're saying this, this is real. This okay. is no joke, dude. Okay, I'll stop All right. laughing. <laughs> okay. Backing me up in the kitchen today will be my backup guys, Gene and Daryl. <laughs> Hello, Daryl. Hello, Gene. Thanks for being here. All right, why eat bugs, you might ask? Why eat bugs? Why eat bugs? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Well, they're actually loaded with protein, a significant source of vitamins and minerals, and they're very low in fat. Wow. Now, you'll see here that the, uh, the termites are you know, very high in iron, while the crickets are, you know, uh, very high in calcium. Together, crickets and termites are very high in protein, much like beef. Mm. Mm. Isn't that nice? So those of you on the protein diet, can actually, uh, if you can't jump and grab a balance bar, you can bend down into a rose bush and crack down on a cricket. <laughs> All right, our first recipe is called Chirpy Chex Mix. <laughs> the special ingredient being what is commonly known as Pseudo Magoplistis or our friend the cricket. Uh... First up, you take six tablespoons of butter with two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Mix it all together, four tablespoons of Creole seasonings and a large roasting pan, such as this. Mix in eight cups of assorted Chex Mix cereal. Very nice. Mm. Also a cup of pretzels and a cup of dry roasted Spanish peanuts from Spain. <laughs> you can stop right there. That's tasty. Yeah, nummy, nummy. Yes. And fattening with all the butter, so who cares about the low and fat cricket? Yeah. <laughs> You'll notice that Daryl is ever so tenderly removing the antenna and the wings. Oh. Out of respect for the cricket. Oh. Now you add the final actual ingredients, which are the cricks. Foreman. Oh. Crick it up. Thank you. Good boy. Now bake at 250 degrees, stirring every 15 minutes. Run along. Through the magic of television, I'll show you the finished product. Mmm. Oh. It's crickalicious. <laughs> Before we go any further, I'd be remiss if I didn't make some gentle wine suggestions. <laughs> because of its light body and subtle texture, uh, a s nice Pinot Grigio goes very well with any bug of light body and subtle texture. <laughs> also, Sauvignon Blanc's crisp acidity and fruitiness is a perfect companion to the woody cricket. I think all you want to do is just wash your mouth out after you eat all that stuff, huh? Yeah, as long as you got a Bartles and James, everything will work out fine. <laughs> now I'd like to move on to my favorite, special Rice Krispie squares. What's special about them, you may say? What's special about them, Dan? Thank you. 
Well, that would be the ready uterus mess <laughs> or the termite larva. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh loud. Sally down. Let's make the recipe. Melt four teaspoons of butter with 20 large marshmallows. So far, Look, like the marshmallows. Yeah, thank you. Uh, then add two and a half cups of rice crispies. Lightly coat an 8x8 baking pan with vegetable oil, and then press the mixture into the baking pan. Press it. After the mixture is pressed in the pan, you will gingerly sprinkle half a cup of baked termite larva uh -huh. into the mix. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Gently press, allow it to cool, and cut. Here's the finished product. Mm. That's it. Now the only... Well, you know what? You don't have to limit your bug eating to just snacks. Bug food is also a very nice salad, soup, dessert, or entree. Ooh. Such as this gem of a Jiminy, cricket pizza. Oh. Or the ever popular scorpion kebabs. Oh. Uh. Is that, this is real? That's real. Take a bite. The only thing left, actually, is to find some sucker who's going to eat it. Oh, um, I, I sort of feel like I have to resign myself. Carmen, can I tempt you to any of this? Um, uh, I don't think so. Look, I'm going to, I'm just going to eat this cricket right here, okay? Pass them around. You know, that cricket wasn't half bad. This isn't so half bad. bad. It wasn't half can, bad. Can, come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Can, uh, can I uh, entreat you lovely, gentle viewers at home, perhaps, to go out in the backyard and dig up some uh, critters and shove them in your mouth as a snack and come back and join us? I don't think I'm going to eat this. with Carmen Electra and um, I noticed that you were abstaining earlier from the termite larvae Rice Krispie squares. Well they were actually smelling kind of good so I thought I would give it a little try. Oh really? Yeah sure okay. why not. Okay. No I'm just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> I was thinking. Like hell I would eat that. <laughs> okay I, I don't know I, I think Dan might have his feelings hurt though. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dan. <laughs> okay. It's right. not happening. Now, Carmen, as you know, as you can well attest, relationships are hard. They're hard, aren't oh, they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're very hard. Now, mm -hmm. but in days of yore, folks had an advantage because they had government training films <laughs> to tell them what to do. <laughs> oh, we could use some of those now. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of them in Party Past. It's hard enough for guys to ask a woman out on a date, goodness knows, but then on top of that, once you get the nerve to ask somebody out on a date, what do you actually do on that date? Well, let's find out when our intrepid friend Tom asks his friend's advice. You know, maestro, I don't think your date ideas are so original. What? About what to do on a date, I mean. But what I'd like to know is, how can you figure out what a girl would like to do? A certain girl, I mean. Well, you might ask her. <laughs> okay. Ooh. There's a lot of discussion points there for me. Number one, this banding about of the word maestro. <laughs> yeah, what is that about? I think we should all call each other maestro <laughs> for the end of the party. And um, I, like, I like the idea of, you know, how do you know? Like, wh osmosis? Telepathy? And I like that it took that long for the guy to figure out how. Well, ask her. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the certain girl in question really has her work cut out for her when uh, <laughs> intrepid Tom in this next clip discovers some possibilities on his own. Hey, what's this? Maybe this is where Jeff gets ideas. A list of coming activities. 
A bike trip. Would Kay enjoy a bike trip? Or a weenie roast? Another group date. A chance to learn the give and take of working and playing together. Not much arranging needed, not much expense. And that can be important. Could be a fine date, if Kay would like it. Wonder if she'd like to go to a baseball game. A date that's not too involved, one you can carry through comfortably. And there are all sorts of other sports events. Swimming meets, for example. You'll notice, uh, you'll notice, Carmen, the overriding themes of cheapness and yeah. convenience. Now, nowadays, they just take a girl to a bar, get her liquored up, and jump on her bones. Like, back then, at least they kind of, like, took some time out to you know, take her something nice. Romance like is it. dead. Romance is dead. You well, know, whatever happened to the weenie roast and the I swim meet? I cannot tell you. I have given it up so many times after a swim meet. You haven't even known. <laughs> yeah, a good square dance really turns me on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, in this third clip, Tom finds out what Kay really likes to Ooh. do on a date. This is fun, isn't it? Yeah. You're sure you like to do things like this? Sure. I thought all girls wanted fellas to take them to fancy places, spend lots of money. Not this girl. You know, I sort of like things like this, too. You won't laugh. I like to go on bicycle trips, too. Do you? And miniature golf. Do you like that? Yeah, and weenie roasts and square dances. And baseball games and taffy pulls. I think they're swell. Say, you like to do lots of things, don't you? <laughs> wow. Score! Who are these films shown to? That's what I want to know. Like, the, who's watching these? The other swell kids <laughs> and any maestros who might have some questions about dating. Look, I'm just wondering if the kids back then were like us, going, what? are we watching? I think they were going, what were we watching? And I, I, I don't think I, Kay is going to take kindly to, to Tom's implication there that all women are a bunch of gold diggers. He's just saying, right. hey, I thought all you gals wanted to go to these <laughs> fancy pants things. I love the, well, not this girl. <laughs> I'm the cheapest of the cheap, Tom. <laughs> I don't know. What do you take away from that kind of thing? Just joy that we don't live in that era anymore? Or? I think it's kind of sweet, actually. Really? Yeah, in a way. All those circle skirts, oh. all those push-up bras. Oh. <laughs> well, speaking of sweet, we're going to have uh, some musical hanky-panky from Dan and the Dan Band after this. But Ooh. we're going to practice our square dancing and taffy pulls. <laughs> Carmen Electra, have you been having fun at the pajama party? So much fun. Good. <laughs> so much fun. Excellent. I don't understand how you can drink these juicy drinks and have lip gloss still in all the right places. It's called a makeup artist. Oh. <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> He's running around here with his lip gloss. Oh, there's a boy in the house. Quick. Mm -hmm. um, Carmen, did you know that my friend Bibi's visiting? She's just right there. There Hi, she is. Hi, Bibi. Hello. Uh, Bibi, something's dawning on me about the fact that you're staying with me. Yeah. Um, I'll have to pay. Well, <laughs> there's not that, but I'm actually experiencing quite a lot of anger. And Before be you go into your anger, can I just say something that I've noticed? What? That's above me, isn't it? Yes, it is. Is that the closing gag? Oh, it, it's not. <laughs> it's not. best friend gets it. Don't, is don't. that Lisa's closing gag? No, it I is would not. never. But all I'm trying to say to you is I was trying to copy you. You showed up a couple days ago and announced that you're off coffee. And now I'm copying you because I want all the health benefits. Yeah. Less cellulite, no bags under my eyes. But yeah. all I am is angry. Yeah. <laughs> And those bugs, 
crisps aren't making me feel happier. And you'll be angry when you know I've been injecting espresso behind your back. Okay. <laughs> so no, I haven't. It's good for you. Is it? Is it good? I mean, are you are you good like that, Carmen? Do you swear off of coffee? And I do hate coffee. I don't like it. Oh, uh, well, So not? I'm not even in. <laughs> but I drink Coca-Cola. Yeah, but that's, that's what I drink. So caffeine. It's the same caffeine, thing. and I drink like twelve a day. It's all bad. Oh, so you're ba <laughs> you're basically much worse off I'm than I was. I'm trying to stop, but I can't. Uh, I can't stop drinking coffee. I try, and then like three hours into a day of it, I have a splitting headache. Well, I'm feeling just a little bit angry, but I know that one thing will bring lightness to my heart, and that is the tenderloins of Dan <laughs> and the Dan Band. Please welcome them. Well, the men come in these places And the men are all the same You don't look at their faces And you don't ask their name You don't think of them as human You don't think of them at all You keep your mind on the money Keeping your eyes on the wall I'm your pride Make a million dollars. Who doesn't? I wanna live out by the sea. Me too. Have some other freaking children. Take mine. I guess I want a family. Me too. Well, the men come in these places, and the men are all the same. You don't look at their faces, and you don't ask their name. Dancer, and I know what to do. 